Hello, my name is Inos and welcome back to my channel. This is Work and Wonder. If this is your first time, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. And anytime I upload a video, you will be notified and you will come straight here and take a look at whatever video that I have uploaded. I talk a lot about mental health, nursing um, in the UK here. I do also talk about a couple of things, but mainly the mental health nursing OSCE. So if you are new here in the country and you're about to prepare for your exams, this is the right channel for you in terms of mental health because my channel is the only channel on YouTube that talks about the mental health nursing OSCE. There are a whole lot of channels, but most of them are adult nursing. And over the year, I've had people who have contacted me and then they are telling me about their stories of going into study for adult nursing things when they are mental health nurses, only to get into the exams hall and they were surprised. So don't, in order for you not to be surprised when you get into the exams hall, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and any um, video that I upload, you'll be notified and then you come here and take a look at it. So by popular request, a lot of people are requesting for the intramuscular injection, which is one of the newly introduced skill stations in the mental health OSCE. We know in the mental health OSCE, we have six skill stations out of this. You'll be um, given four of them, which, or you'll be tested on four of them. And just recently, last month, they added intramuscular injection, which um, replaced that of the suppository. Now, a lot of people are asking that I talk about the intramuscular injection, and that is what I'm going to do. I have the marking criteria here, but I don't want to touch the marking criteria. I know what is in the marking criteria, but I want to make it very, very simple for you because as it stands now, I cannot do it practically for you to see it. I've ordered some things, but they are not yet in. When it comes, I'll do a part two of this video and then we will um, take a look at how it is done practically. But there are some very important things that I want you to know as far as depots or IMs are um, concern in mental health nursing. This particular video might not just be for the OSCE purpose, but obviously after the OSCE, you will be recruited into either a hospital or a care home and you'll be given injections, uh, you know, IM injections. And this information that I'll be giving to you would really, really, really be of help um, correlating it with the OSCE. So first of all, let's look at the reasons why, you know, we give IMs in the mental health setting and there are just there are a lot of them but i'll talk about mainly two one most of our patients do not tolerate the oral medication so they will not tolerate the oral medications at all if you want to put them on the orals at some point in time they are just going to be non-compliant they are just going to go off their medications and then at a the point they might relapse and they are relapsing you just keep on readmitting them onto the hospital so so to prevent that some of them will prefer you give them an injection which will last for a certain period of time and then when the time elapses they will come back and then they come and take it again so they can have it on weekly basis they can have it on two weekly basis three weekly basis or even four weekly basis so most of our mental health IM injections normally when you give it at least a week or um, two weeks three weeks four weeks and that is really 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 helpful for patients that are um, you know that 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 will not take their medications or that will not be non-compliant with their medication if it is oral that they are taking so that's one of the reasons and another one is of course rapid tranquilization um you know at some point you can have some patients which is, who are very very acutely ill and then they are very very aggressive you know very very violent and at that point um, all de-escalation techniques will not work. Verbal, even um, restrict, restrict, restraining them will not work. So at that point, you need to kind of give them rapid tranquilization and that will be by IM injections. Once you inject it, fast acting and then, you know, it kind of calms them down or it kind of a bit knocks them a bit down. So these are the two main reasons, but there are a whole lot more, obviously, to treat other um, physical health conditions. Uh, other physical health conditions will also be part of this, but these are the mainly two two um, reasons why we give IMs that I want to talk about. Then, what are some of the psychotropic medications that we can give as IM? So this one is for excess purpose, so you might want to take note of it, and I'll put them on the screen as well. I'll just mention about four of them. I'll mention about paliperidone, which is an antipsychotic that we give, uh, one of the first line of 
medications that we use for treating psychosis, schizophrenia. Then I also talk about olanzapine, olanzapine um, long acting. Then we can also talk about zoglopentazol, acetate, zoglopentazol, um, deconate. These are two medications in two forms. One's, one is very short acting and the other one is a bit long acting. So you, this is your assignment. Go and look for the one that is um, long acting and then the one that is like short acting. So these are like a couple of medications that you can give as um, an IM, which are psychotropic medications. Aside that, there are also some physical health medications like testosterone injections, like vitamin B12, um, even flu, flu um, vaccines, and then even COVID. These are all medications that we normally give as IM. Now that we've tackled the reason for giving IMs and then the type of medication or example of medications that you can give as IM, now what we are going to look at is the sites. So mainly we know that we either go into the deltoid muscles which are found here or we can go into the glutea which is on the bum or we can go to the vastus lateralis which is on the thigh. So these are like the three main popular sites that you can give your IM injection. And basically the site and the thickness of the muscle usually determines the size of the needle that you are going to use. So the needle that you might use for an ass or a bum that is like, you know, has a lot, a lot, which is very thick. Uh, that might not be the same size you might use for another one, which is a bit thinner. So selection of your needle is also based on it. So when they give you your patient and you are seeing your patient, make sure that you look at wherever the scenario says you are going to give your injection and then you select the appropriate needle. So yes, this is a bit of education about the IM. But then let's now make it very simple. So the IM station is just like an implementation station just like an implementation station in the assessment. So first of all, when you come in, of course, you are going to check for your scene safety to make sure that um, the scene is safe for you, for your patient as well. Then, of course, you have to close a door to ensure privacy. Then you do your hand rub according to your WHO guidelines. And now you walk to the patient and then you now introduce yourself. That's where the conversation starts. When you introduce yourself from there, you also confirm the name of the patient. So you ask the patient's name and then you confirm it with what you have on your sheet just to confirm that you are with the right patient. And then at that point, you can let the patient know what you are there to do and if the patient consents to that. So I'm here to give you your 12 or your two weekly um, depot, your two weekly um, olanzapine um, IM injection. Let the patient know and then what the patient should expect, where you are going to give it and then probably how long that is going to take and if the patient consents to that that is fine at that point when the patient is consenting to that you can tell the patient that all right in that case you go and get your things together and then you come back you go through the prescription and then you now administer their medication so when you pick your sheet and then when you get to the medication trolley where the medication is of course you have to do another hand rub according to a WHO guideline, whether it's by using the tap to wash or you can use your hand gel. Then you can put on your apron and then um, you can also put on your gloves. So at that point, when you pick out the medication, you make sure you check it with the prescription to make sure if it is less, assume we are doing paliperidone 75 milligrams and it's going into the deltoid muscle, you check it, this is paliperidone, you pick the paliperidone, and then we are giving you 75. So one male is 75 or two males is 75, whatever is on the paliperidone ampoule or whatever it is in, you read it against the, um, the prescription. Make sure that that is the right drug, that is the right dose that you be withdrawing. You make sure that it is not expired, it's still in date. You make sure that that is the right medication. So at that point, what you can do is that you can draw the, um, you know, the one mail that you need to take off that particular one. When you are withdrawing the medications, as I said, you need, you need two needles. So one is just for drawing the medication and then the other one will be for injecting. So you pick two needles, you draw the dosage that you need and then you can take that needle off, dispose it in the needle box, and now you can put on the needle that you are going to use to inject. You prepare that, you have that there. Then the second thing you will need is an alcohol rub, which you are going to rub the area. If the area is not clean, then you also put it in your tray. Then you can also pick a piece of plaster. Some people might bleed after giving the injection. You also place it there. So at this point, once you are done, 
with it with um, you know withdrawing and everything with your gloves now you can take off your gloves and now once you take it off you do another hand rub so in this particular station you are required to do three hand rubs so the initial staging when you are entering there after speaking to the patient when you're about to wear your things you wear it to withdraw or to prepare the medication then when you are done you remove the glass and you can do another hand rub or you do another hand rub again and put on a new glass now you are with your tray which has your medication in there which you have a plaster you also have an, a hand, um, an alcohol gel to rub the area where you'll be injecting now when you get back to the patient you will confirm to see that you are with the right patient or you are with the same patient you spoke to initially after reconfirming that now you will go through the prescription with the patient so you go through the prescription you let the patient know the medication you are going to give whether the medication is signed is duly signed by the doctor his bleep number everything is checked out correct the medication is legible it is correct for you to administer it once you've gone through the prescription and everything checks out well now you make sure that if the door is not locked you make sure that it is closed to ensure or you just ensure the privacy of the patient now you ask the patient whether the patient is comfortable the way the patient is seated if the patient is not comfortable you try to help the patient to be in a comfortable position and then if it is a deltoid per the scenario you ask the patient where the patient will want to have it ideally in exam situation what we normally do is that we kind of rotate the sites you know if this week it was given here the next week you give it here and one very important thing in the hospital setting too is when you draw you withdraw the um you know uh, we withdraw the medication usually you need a second person to also check to see that that is the right dosage that you are but in the exam situation it might not you know um it, it might not be in play there because basically you're just the only one person or you can ask the assessor if the assessor will want to check some assessors probably might stand up and come and stand by you to see whether you are draw we are withdrawing the right dosage and some people too they want you to show it to them for them to see that you have actually withdraw the one meal that you were supposed to withdraw two meals or whatever the dosage is now when you are done with that now you ask the patient if the patient is seated comfortably the patient wants it on the left arm now you expose the area when you expose the area that is where you have to now check the area to see whether the area is clean there are no wounds there are no there is nothing there that will prevent you from injecting that particular um you know i am injection there if there are like wounds and um, there are boils and things there then that will not be the right place for you to inject it so you have to check the area to make sure that it is clean and then you'll be it is safe for you to administer the injection there after checking the place to make sure that the place is clean there are no wounds there are no plasters there's nothing there to prevent you from giving your safe um i am there and you can now use your um your alcohol gel with um, your alcohol gel foam or whatever it is whether it's in a gauze or whether it is in a cotton to clean there from in to out where you clean the area and now after cleaning the area you now pick your tray and now you tell the patient that I'm now about to give it it is just going to be a gentle prick and we know I am you are supposed to go to the skin so uh, we are supposed to go in the skin 90 degrees but before that normally what you do is you retract the skin you retract or you stretch the skin when you stretch the skin with your non-dominant hand then you gently go in with the needle 90 degrees and you make sure that at least there's one centimeter of the needle left out so you don't push it all the way through at least one centimeter left and then you will now push in the um the medication little by little at least takes you about three seconds to put in a, to push in a bit little by little then when you are done you now rapidly also pull it out and when you pull it out and of course if there's blood coming you pick a plaster and then you can put it there and ask the patient not to massage the place because once they massage that will cause tissue damage immediately you are done with that then you can discard that you don't recap it just discard it in the sharp um, um, waste bin and now you can now do your documentation you document that you have given that particular medication after documenting what do you do you thank the patient and then you let the patient know that from time to time 
you can you ask the patient whether the patient is comfortable and all of that if the patient is you thank the patient you ask the patient whether the patient has any questions for you if the patient does not have any questions then you can now leave the patient bedside um, you can now tell just let the patient know that from time to time you come back to check up on the patient um, just to see whether the patient is doing well after you know after giving the injection because some people might have some form of um, you know reaction towards that and then you know you can now discard your items you wash your hands you do the last hand rub and that will be it for the IM injection so you can see how very simple it is so once you are done with that then you are just done with your IM injections but then there are some very few things that you need to take note you remember that when I was saying when the needle is going in you leave, at, you leave at least one centimeter the purpose of that is in case the needle gets broken at least there's something that you can hold on to but if you push everything in that way and then the needle uh, gets broken then there's nothing for you to hold on to pull out the needle out and then uh, not massaging the plates is also to prevent um, tissue damage as simple as that if you want doing it you can verbalize that and you can give the reason for that to your assessor so it's just as simple as it. that is all about the IM injection just you know take it as if it's an implementation station you are doing just that it's more extended because this time the route of administration is different and your skill that you're also going to use is different so there are just some very few things that i need you to take note of the very first thing is not massaging the place after giving the injection there are you um, inserting the needle at a 90 degree angle leaving at least one centimeter out there so that when the needle gets broken you can pull it out and then of course um, the site of injection will also determine the length of the needle that you are going to use so basically these are the things that you would have to take into consideration when you are giving your IM injection and it's just as simple as this as I said I will do the part two of the video where I'm going to practically do it when my items that I have ordered when it comes through I'll make sure that I do it for you to be able to see me you know um, do it practically and then you can also see how that is done aside that there's nothing much my name is Enos and this is work and wonder please make sure you subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell and anytime I upload the video you'll be notified and you will come straight here and take a look at the video until I see you in my next video part two it is a bye for now